I'm Lynn Prowse Bishop and this is The Virtual Business Show. In this episode, we'll be discussing mailing lists and for Australian businesses, your obligations under the SPAM Act and privacy principles. Thanks for joining me. It's happened to me a few times now. I've had newsletters from various places turn up in my inbox and I think to myself, I don't remember signing up for that. Most of the time, I put it down to my poor memory, and if I decide I don't want to read the newsletter, I unsubscribe. I'm sure that many of you have gone through the same thing. But a newsletter came to me recently that I know I didn't subscribe to. The business owner had just simply signed me up to their mailing list. I'm sure you're also familiar with those times that you purchase something online, and next thing you're receiving marketing emails from the business every other day, even if you didn't check the box saying, add me to your list. And you simply cannot get off the list no matter how many times you hit unsubscribe. So in this episode, I'll be talking about the Australian rules around mailing lists and what you should be doing to ensure compliance. If you use a mailing list, and let's be honest, what business these days doesn't, it's a contravention of Australia's privacy and anti-spam legislation to sign someone up to receive commercial communications, including your newsletter, from you without their consent. The government put out a guide for business, which you can find at the Australian Communications and Media Authority website, and I'll include a link at the podcast page. Businesses in breach of the SPAM Act can face seriously big court-imposed penalties. In the 18 months to January 2021, businesses have paid over $2.1 million for ACMA-issued infringement notices for breaking spam and telemarketing laws. There are three steps businesses should follow in order to comply with the SPAM Act. Consent identify and unsubscribe and I'll go through each of those in detail. So first up, consent. You can only send commercial messages when you have consent, either express consent or inferred consent based on your relationship with the person. Express consent includes things like having people fill in a form, tick a box on a website or oral consent over the phone or face to face. You can infer consent if the recipient is knowingly and directly giving their address and it's reasonable to believe that they would expect to receive marketing from your business based on the conduct and business relationship of the individual or organisation concerned. It's worth noting that if you took details of customers' phone numbers and email addresses for contact tracing purposes through COVID, you cannot use these for marketing. Buying a marketing list constitutes neither express nor inferred consent. You should be careful if you are buying marketing lists. It's illegal under the Act to use address harvesting software or to purchase lists made using harvesting software. Step two is identify. Your commercial message should clearly identify who is responsible for sending the message and how they can be contacted, including the correct business name or Australian business number or the name of the sender and the information should remain correct for at least 30 days after you send the message. And step three is unsubscribe. All commercial electronic messages must contain a functional unsubscribe facility, allowing people to opt out from receiving future messages from you, and the request must be honoured. You cannot ask for a fee to unsubscribe, ask people to set up a username and password or other account before they unsubscribe, and the unsubscribe method must remain functional for 30 days after you send the message. Now, these rules even apply to old contact lists. You must be sure that you have either express or inferred consent from everyone on your contact list that you can send them commercial messages. Of course, political parties and religious organisations are exempt from compliance with the SPAM Act, so you will continue to receive email and text messages from them. The legislation also bans the use of address harvesting software, as I said, and harvested address lists. However, lists generated manually, so that would be like going to websites and actually manually taking the details, are not prohibited. If you purchase a distribution list, you must be sure that consent has been obtained from each address on the list before commercial messages are sent. So what if you meet someone at a networking function? exchange business cards and their email address is included on the card. Surely this can be taken as inferred consent since you can reasonably infer that if they've included their email, they expect to receive communication this way. 
Well, this scenario hasn't actually been tested in court yet, but it can be argued that you have a business relationship with any person that you meet at a networking event. And under the Act, if you have a business relationship with a person or organisation, their consent to receiving emails from you can be inferred. But to be safe, if you collect business cards at networking functions, then do not simply add people to your mailing list without first contacting them, asking for permission to do so. And ensure you include a link to your privacy policy so recipients understand how you collect, store and use personal information. If you don't have one, a virtual assistant can help get that sorted for you. In addition to the SPAM Act, if you are an organisation with an annual turnover more than $3 million, you should also ensure you comply with the provisions of the Australian Privacy Principles. You'll find more information about those at the Office of the Australian Information Commissioner. There, you'll find links to information on which organisations need to comply, further guidelines for compliance, and details of the 13 privacy principles, and I'll include a link at the podcast page. All this information applies to Australian legislation. You should also consider your obligations under the General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR. Despite that this law primarily covers people in the European Union, it imposes obligations on any organisation anywhere in the world, so long as they target or collect data related to people living in the EU. It is so complex that I cannot go into the details here, so if you are likely to have subscribers from the EU or be marketing to people in the EU, be sure to get yourself informed and ensure your compliance. A link to further information about the GDPR is included on the podcast page. I'm Lynn Prowse-Bishop. Thanks so much for listening. 